Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a Hulu original, MODOK, from Marvel Comics. What a funny show, I'll say right off the bat, I enjoyed it. It's a Hulu original, and it's mainly voiced by Patton Oswalt as the main character, MODOK, and it has a great voice cast not so many people i recognize by name except for the guests who come on the show and first off modok is a very underused villain in marvel comics i even as a game master when i role play i even maybe have used him a couple of times but mostly for up and coming heroes this takes it to another level of it's got so much stuff, it's hard to describe. It's it's definitely more adult, for sure, but it's irreverent and funny, sad, deep. It's got, it runs the gambit of everything. But in the center of it is this super villain, well, I don't know if you can call him super, with a family. And it is played great. I think there's 10 episodes in a season. It has an overall plot, which is um, pretty good. Now, going back, I mean, if I pick out the Spider-Man, the X-Men, along the way, Marvel has done a couple of cool things animated-wise, like Hulk-verse. I, I recommend that. It's like Hulk-verse Wolverine and Hulk-verse Thor. Yeah, it's like, a, you know, like a, I don't know, hour, hour and ten minute long. It's broken into two movies. Hulk verse. Anyway, DC has for a long time owned this um, media. And Marvel has taken a chance, and I really respect that. This is not going to be for everybody. It's got curses and foul language and obscene, crazy fucking premises and displays. And it's stop animation. It's claymation. This is insane to begin with and i think it's a great vehicle for this type of lunacy uh, for lack of a better word there's something special about Patton oswald's voice when he's in these situations and seeing the point of view of some villain is just breathtaking it just captures a moment that i didn't think was possible for comic book adaptions and movies it's, you know, it's one thing to say, oh, you know, I like playing a villain. It was more fun to play the villain in certain things. You really don't see it displayed a lot on, you know, in any kind of content for, you know, for the most part. I mean, it, it could be done. But here they got this wild premise. Oh, we got this super villain. He's uh, not very super in that sense. He gets fired from his job or demoted from aim because he runs a section he runs aim it's a super scientist he has a colleague at work who he's competitive against and they hate each other but they respect each other as a it just gets crazy there's so much you can do to stop animation stuff and the way they use it is just it is fun as fuck this show i really appreciate what they did with um bringing in certain guests and some of the themes they touch on and they go really crazy the voice acting chemistry is on point the voices sound really good for the characters they interact awesomely and you're not going to get this um wow special effects but i can't help but enjoy this i was really not expecting to enjoy this maybe i went in with the wrong frame frame of mind but like I said, I've been a comic book collector. I'm 50 now since I'm, you know, seven years old or whatever, to a certain extent. Played the games. I role play. I run the games as a game master. Modoc is someone you use sparingly here and there. You keep him in the background. And it just elevates this character. And you get to really appreciate and you get attached to him in his life and his wife his two kids and they go off the chain sometimes it's just like what are you fucking doing here 
And I find myself immersed and just engrossed in the show. I think when you look at the arc also, it could be a really good plot, you know, if it put all the zaniness going on. You've got this guy, like I said, he's, uh, you know, running aim, it gets taken over or bought out or, you know, sold to a certain division. He gets all these new revelations about, um, you know, what his position is in the company sort of thing. He's no longer the leader, but he's got these aspirations of taking over the world. And he's like trying to balance this with his family and stuff, but he's a idiot maniac. It's just so wonder to see how they put all this together. And even some of the concepts they put into the show, tropey as they are, work. It's it's a great balancing act the show does. Like I said, it bounces from deep and uh thought provoking to what am I fucking seeing? You know, what are they doing with these animations? This it just gets so out there and I found myself smiling so much, enjoying it every step of the way. Now it's not perfection and I don't know if you can get perfection in a stop ad- gap animation, whatever they call it, claymation type thing. But holy shit, this is not Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer or any of those, you know, Heat Meister things, uh, Frosty the Snowman. But who fucking thought of doing this? This whole concept is interesting to me. I want to actually look into it, you know, when it's developed, like what team came to, you know, decide to do this. I think it had something to do with, um, doing something called the offenders, I guess, to, uh, you know, kind of go against the Avengers in a sense, but to just begin to describe some of the episodes and what they go through is, in, is I don't know, where do you begin? It's get so crazy with all the schemes that are going on. If it's not a new invention, if it's not uh, helping his family out, if it's not going through a divorce, if it's not losing everything and like i said it, there's not that many super guest stars but iron man is a thing that comes back every once in a while he considers him as like nemesis for some reason but iron man's like oh god and it really hits home a lot of points well i didn't expect it to um the music the yeah, goes well it's not overbearing i like the um the way they decided to go with this an- this animation, I don't know what they call it. Is it just claymation? I don't think it's claymation, is it? What do they call this fucking thing? Stop motion aspects of the series. Um, anyway. I am really impressed. I recommend this wholeheartedly, but you want to get in the frame of mind that it's probably not for little kids. Hold on me if I... I don't know. It's got gross, over-the-top um, gore, themes, tropes. It's language at times is foul mouth to the extreme, but used well. Like I said, it's an irreverent, zany ride that I am glad I jumped on and i almost didn't pull the trigger on this and i guess a lot of it has to do with understanding that maybe there's a place out there for things like um some of the marvel stuff they've done like their spider-mans and their hulks they're not for me they make me cringe but i'm not here to say they're good or bad and maybe they're for another you know age group or something like I hear the Titans is good. They look like little Pokemon, little Teen Titans, but it's not for me. So maybe there's value in that, but I don't have confidence in Marvel's animated presence. It's history, except for, like I mentioned, of course, Spider-Man in the 90s, X-Men, and here and there. I kind of like things like X-Men Evolution, but they don't really come across as, um, you know, breakthrough animation and 
great storytelling with adaptions like the X-Men was, one of my favorites. And like I said, when you look at the um, uh, history of consistency, DC has been much better at it. I'll give gripes on some of the choices they made and, you know, I'm not interested in the storyline or whatever, but they mostly come to the table, you know, you're going to get something good. In the same case with Marvel Cinematic Universe, yes, there are uh, not very well done movies here and there, but they're enjoyable for the most part. You get confidence, unlike the DC movies, where you're like, okay, even Wonder Woman 84, fun as it was, is not a fucking very good movie. But, but getting back to this, it's an animated show, stop motion kind of claymation you can get a little bit of detail in there that you're amazed at and then just crazy look you don't even know what's going on on the screen sometimes these are super scientists villains inventors there's the whole corporation aspect you got a new takeover this plot and scheming going behind the scenes you have a time traveling alternate fucking monkey wrench thrown into everything and they Use little cool things like, for me, like when I look at the show and I what I know about the comics, when I see Super Adaptoid being used as a a joke and a toaster and a car, it was funny, but it's not what you would see. Super Adaptoid might be the most dangerous, powerful character on the show, although they do go to Asgard and things like that. But at the heart of this is his family and his interactions and. As irreverent and foul mouthed and as evil as he is, it is fun to watch. He's got his partner nemesis at the AIM Corporation that she becomes the super scientist. And there's people dying, experimented on. You, you can't, you have to give the show a shot to even understand the concepts that it's doing. It's. Everything zany you can imagine being done, stoned on fucking acid with claymation type stop motion and just going to town. I'm not sure about the release of this. This is not something I did a super deep dive on. As I said, I wasn't even sure I was going to be interested in watching it. But I'm curious to know where, where this is going. It kind of leaves on a... Mm, Maybe not a super cliffhanger, but there are things resolved and there are things left open. So I'm not sure if this is a one-shot zany. Look what we did. Holy shit. I love it. But it's not for everybody. And will it get picked up? Will, will this be a thing we'll be seeing every a couple of seasons of? I don't know. But holy shit. So much fun and enjoyment in this. Again, kudos to Marvel for trying something like this. I don't know where the fuck you come up with the concept, especially in this day and age, how easy it is to do cookie cutter animations these days. And someone said, you know what, let's do stop motion, like claymation things, a throwback, where even the best special effects look weird, but oddly fascinating. The distortions of the creatures and some of the concept of like organic replicas of things people getting bred and popping babies it's just bonkers it gets fucking bonkers and again i don't know like where you put this it's not gonna be for everybody i could see if i did have some sort of following on here what would be the split here like marvel's out of their minds they you know I try a concept like this, but even Holly Quinn from DC, I really love, and that gets irreverent and crazy, potty mouth stuff. And, you know, I just did a He-Man thing, which I wasn't really wowed with. And that animation is in fucking incredible, bringing back to life the old, keeping it in sync, except for the new, you know, the... I don't know if you're into the no and that type of fucking thing, but Kevin Smith getting railed on fucking line about him lying and it's not about He-Man, whatever the fuck. This is more captivating to me. This is a surprise, a, a, like a present out of nowhere. 
I just decided to turn it on, put it on. I had a friend telling me about it, and I really wasn't on board with it. I saw a couple things here and there, but I really wasn't turned on by it. And I do follow Pat Oswald on Twitter, and he's fucking amazing follow. So that I recommend also. He's funny, he interacts here and there, and he's just a joy to see his things pop up on Twitter when you got the most insane bullshit going on nonsense so there you go um these are like my surface thoughts my you know i just finished watching it not too long ago and by not too long ago i mean hours there's an excitement a feeling that you know maybe with wandavision also you got the first three episodes of wandavision uh netflix marvel show depicting Wanda and Vision's further journey after the movies. And the first three episodes of that, you're like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what is going on? Are you really trying this? And it fucking works when you get to get to the end of it. This, I'm like, all right, what am I going to get? And from the first fucking 10 minutes, first five minutes, I'm captivated. I'm I'm like, what the fuck? I'm smiling. I'm laughing. I totally recommend this for everybody. I don't even know. Maybe you let your fucking kids watch it. It's that crazy. I don't know if you're going to get that. Um, Yeah, I guess maybe not. It is called an adult show. I don't know. I don't have children, but I'm like, you know what? You know, let your dogs watch it. That's that's a definite. Because you know, they're going to see shit on the screen. It's going to bug the fuck, bug them out. It's just, you know, it's almost like you ever watch Sausage Me and Me and the Phillies classic things with this chopped compressed fucking spiced meat the show's got that way of flowing animation it's just like some of the things they do are so off the wall and through the whole thing you've got Pat and Oswald nailing every line every little nuance and he's just endearing and how do you start to like this super villain I don't fucking know how they did it you start caring about his kids, and you're fascinated with his kids, and his, because one kid's like, and when I say normal, I mean normal body-wise, but he's got a daughter that has a big head like him, and the daughter calls the mother, the mother calls the daughter a womb smasher or something like that, is when she gave birth to I can't even begin to delve into some of the profanity, the zaniness, the off-the-fucking-charts craziness and some really deep moments with the family and what's going again this is a weird one to even describe to get to turn the mic on and go i just watched modok i loved it but what the fuck was this this is so it came out of someone's insane mind it gives me the vibes of like tim burton when he put some of his flavor into the batman 89 it revitalized it Although he might be somewhat of a eccentric, I don't know if he's. I hope he's doing well. But he started doing these claymation, these animated movies. I wasn't really a big fan, but got a lot of critical acclaim, I believe. And I don't know if this is gonna get that because it. Well, I guess I'd have to watch those movies to judge them. You know, if they have the zaniness and go off the wall. And I think Nathan Fillion does uh, Wonder Man in this, and it's, you know, he's getting a divorce and Wonder Man dating his wife. It's just gold, comedy gold, and what you can do in this claymation was pretty amazing. Like, you're amazed at how dumb it looks and how, you know, what a throwback it is. But then you're amazed by some of the detail they put in some of this uh, claymation, whatever the fuck it is. And you're like, what the fuck? And again, uh, I keep babbling about this show. It's one of those things I think you have to check out. I think you have to really give it a shot. It's 10 episodes. I don't know, 25 minutes each, 22, 25, whatever. And as I said, as I'll sum up real quick, it's got a good plot. It's got this focus on him and his family, but it's a reverent zaniness. It's highlighting supervillains and killing and mass murder and... Um, like I said, alternate 
fucking timelines. It's got so much going for it that it's hard to describe in a lot of detail. You just got to give this a shot. You got to watch this show unfold and it's fucking, I don't know. It's like a rare thing to see these days, I think. Hell of an effort. Good, good try. Knocked it out of the park for me. But again, this would be something I was interested to see. Don't, maybe now I'll do a deep dive. As I explained, sometimes I don't like to, you know, look into things too much. I want to get my own opinion. And something like this, you know, you just watch and you just get on the mic and hopefully it's enjoyable. So anyway, give Modoc a shot. Watch it. Craziness. I loved it. Hopefully there's more. I'll watch it. Maybe not for anybody. Take care, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Till next time, I'll see you all later.